What's going on guys and welcome to season 5 of my Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode series. I apologize for the long wait on this episode. I think it's been like a month. I just had so many other videos to do. Obviously was busy too with the GWC but uh, I'm going to start getting these out for you guys. Uh, so I guess I'll give you a refresher. Tempe Lightning just won the Stanley Cup last year. Um, so that's the 2022 Stanley Cup. We actually lost them in the second round, a best of seven. So, or sorry, in seven. Uh, so we played them tough, and of course, uh, they go on to beat the Winnipeg Jets. Seems like that's the Stanley Cup final in so many of these Sims. Um, also, too, I want to show you guys just kind of what the team's looking like, all the players here. Um, a lot of the like former Thrasher players, Bufflin, Wheeler, starting to decrease a lot in rating, but still, I think we have a very solid young core. So um, you can see there we got Barzell, Lindholm, who doesn't want to come back to free agent, but we have the money can probably persuade him. Wallstrom there, Dubois, Perfetti's awesome now, 86, still on that entry level. Um, Bailey, Meyer, Truba. Kane still in 84, which isn't too bad. We got Niku there, Bellino, Byram. Uh, Wheeler, as you can see, is down to 82, making 8.2 million, which is really rough. So it's going to be for, I think, what, three more years. Definitely that's not a good contract for us. Bukestad even maybe will trade away. Um, rest of the guys kind of fill in. Bufflin's contract is up. Um, in terms of the goaltenders, we got Jonathan Quick right now, 84, making 5.8 for one more year. So maybe look for a better goalie, but Swaz not bad backup. Now, uh, Kovachuk's actually retired for us, no longer on our team, but he's still in this game on the LA Kings. So I feel like we're going to try and trade for him um, from LA, as on LA, he's actually sick. 39 years old, but he's still an 85 somehow, where ours was like 79, 78. Still had really good offensive stats, but everything else was down. So um, we'll try and make that trade during the offseason. Um, also, too, it's a 2022 draft. This is actually the first time I'm doing the 2022 draft, and this is the stacked one. Um, we've added, of course, those two franchise players in Shane Wright and Matthew Savoie, and they're actually going to go second and third behind this Pearson dude who's also franchise. Now, I assume he's going to be, like, you know, higher rated than them, but uh, they're supposed to be pretty good. It looks like he tore up whatever league he was in was at 100, or sorry, 98 points, 68 games. Owen Nolan, he's 6'5", looks like a beast. Um, Shane Wright, though, so while we both know our franchise, Lampert there is high elite, so definitely want to get a top four pick, um, no matter pretty much the price to trade up, it's definitely going to be worth it. Throughout the draft now, guys, I decided to take a look at the gems, and as you can see, there are a ton. Uh, the one I want the most probably is this Russian goalie, medium elite potential, guaranteed, uh, rank 159, so definitely will be a late round steal for us. A um, bunch of other guys there. Now, we already have two awesome goalie prospects, Jesper Wallstedt and Spencer Knight, but you can never have too many. So, like I mentioned, there's three guys, all franchise potential, going to go one, two, and three. Um, so the first pick obviously has the most value, then the second, then the third. And the third pick, you're still getting a franchise player. Ottawa's third pick is on the block. It has the least amount of value of the three. So uh, I'm going to do my best to trade for it right now. Pretty much whatever price it is, I think we're going to be stealing a player from them. All right, guys, so raise the offer I'm making Ottawa. Our first round pick in this year's draft, which is 20th overall. So we're jumping up 17 spots quite a bit, especially to get a franchise player. Um, Josh Bailey here is a good player, but it's worth it to get a franchise prospect. Plus 32.85. Probably in a couple years he starts to drop. He's making 5 mil for three more years. And then Bukestad, honestly, a bit of a cap dump. Three and a half there in 81. We can probably get a similar rated player for cheaper. Um, so we'll see what they say. The value's on our side. The pick's on the block. Hopefully they say yes. And trade's accepted. That is awesome. So most likely here we're going to get Matthew Savoy. I assume, while wow, this Pearson guy, 84 overall out of the draft. As well, he's got medium franchise, so we'll see who uh, St. Louis takes. And yeah, they do take Shane Wright, also 84 overall, medium franchise out of the draft. That's insane. So Savoie will probably be 83, one behind those two, but who cares? He's franchise, and yeah, he's, he's 83, but honestly, like, we just stole him. So he's two overall behind uh, Josh Bailey with franchise potential. Like, we'll put him immediately into the NHL. He's going to grow a ton, so this just shows you how stacked the 2022 draft is. Like after that, Lambert there, 81 overall, highly out of the draft. He'll also be in the NHL immediately. So um, this draft class is insane. And our next pick after that, guys, is the 20th pick in the second round. Just want to take a quick look here at the rest of the first. So 80 overall, wow, 80 overall, medium top four. I don't usually see that high rated without elite potential. That's kind of cool. Um, 81 medium elite. So um, pretty sick draft here. 76 medium elite. Looks like we didn't actually add those three guys, the two medium franchise and one high elite. The draft would have been only okay it looks like but um yeah i'm glad we did so um second round any like elites get stolen you got a low elite there another one so at 79 low elites actually really good bails um but i think there's a lot of guys available like i was showing you guys um tons of gems so we'll see here what's the best uh guaranteed medium top four i mean you can't really go wrong with that 
Let's see what else we got here. Guaranteed medium elite, but 157. We can definitely wait to take him. Some guys there that are like 50-50 medium elites. Guaranteed low elite defenseman, 190. So we'll take him with like a 7th round pick. Gem there, low elite. He's also like 76 ranked. Um, guaranteed medium top 6 that are also pretty low ranked. So um, honestly, I think we'll take the medium uh, top 4 defenseman right here because... It just seems like the best value with this pick. I believe we actually have uh, two second rounders. So hopefully just like a decent rating here out of the draft. And 61 overall, medium top four. Not bad at all. And we actually have two picks here, guys, in the second round. Next pick is number 30. So um, probably going to go with like a low elite here. Um, or maybe just like the highest ranked gem. Still probably a bunch. Yeah, there are. Uh, 61. So this guy here, low top six. Um, low bottom six gem. I'm not sure how that works. Um, that guy's a bust. Okay, so low elite 50-50. Do we take him right now? I think I'd rather him than low top six. Please be low elite or even better. Low top four. So not quite as good as we were hoping, but that's all right. And next year we have pick number three in the third round. So basically like four picks later. Um, so you got that low top six gem, low top four. I feel like we might as well, though, just take the guys we know are going to be good. So, um, that goalie there, 159. Like, we can definitely wait on him. Um, let's see. The lowly defenseman, 190. Medium starter, 100. We're getting close to that. A couple more low top sixes. Even though they're gems, though, I don't even know if it's, like, worth it if there's, say, a medium top six guaranteed available. Like, that lowly defenseman's guaranteed, but he won't be picked for a while. Like, yeah, right here, two guaranteed medium top sixes. Um, so, I guess we're just going to go off the board. Or do we take the low top sixes? Um, Janes, Setaguchi, both gems, both gonna be gone soon. Um, so we'll take the winger here. Hope for the hope for the best. And 64 low top six. It's not too bad. Our next pick here, guys, is number 23 in the sixth round. So I um, feel like the other low top six probably gone. This guy, low top four defense, and we just got one of those though. Um, so right there's our three gems. We're 85 right now. So probably. Take this starting goaltender just to be safe. Make sure to get the lead with our fourth round pick. 47 overall is not great, but uh, medium start in the third round. Can't complain. And our next pick is actually in the fifth round. Um, 20. I'm going to decline that trade. I thought we had a fourth round trade, so this is a bit risky. 144. Oh, no. If we, I thought we had a fourth round pick. 144. There he is. Our uh, elite goaltender is still there. Same with the low elite defenseman. That is cutting it close, though, so... Butsayev, let's see, 61 overall, it's also not bad rating for goalie, medium elite, um, should be able to get that low elite German defenseman in the 6th round, we have a pick, we do have a pick, pick number 20, I guess we're just going to risk it, so 175, I think he's like rank 190, let's find out, and yeah, he's rank 190, so we're still going to get him, Thalberger, 51 overall, pretty low rated, but again, low elite, 6th round, can't complain. And next year, guys, I'm trying to get back into the draft, as there's a couple of prospects I still want. We only have one 7th rounder, so offering Philly here a 6th and 7th in 2024, and they say yes, that makes sense. Um, we actually only have a 4th, 6th, and 7th, I believe, um, in next year's draft, because we kind of stacked up for 2022. Um, so right here, let's see, I believe there's still some decent stuff available. Um, so Trainor here, 50-50 medium elite. Um, this guy, pretty good chance he's low lead, the center. Um, guaranteed low top six, though. Guaranteed low top four. I'm going to have to trade, honestly, back in. Let's take... Who's going to go next, it looks like? This trainer guy. Let's just see what he is. Hope for the best. Fringe starter. That's not terrible. So trying to trade back in here, guys. The Hurricanes offering them two sevens there. Trade is accepted. So probably paid Philly a bit too much, as Philly's picks actually after this one, but... I want to try that, uh, you know, taking a chance on that goalie. 50-50, medium elite, you got to. So next year, we'll probably just go with the guaranteed guys. So low top four, like we got that in the third round. To get it in the seventh, even though he's 50 overall, honestly, that's just such good value. And then two picks later here, we're going to take the low top six. Like we could take a chance on the guy that could be low elite, but I'd rather just go with the sure thing here. Guaranteed low starter, but we already have, honestly, probably too many goalies. So Nikolin here. 59, honestly, that's pretty high rating, low top 6. I would say uh, this draft went very well for us. Obviously, Savoie there. I can't believe we actually got him for the price we did with Ottawa. So, yeah, look at that draft class. Not too bad. So, another resign period here, guys. We'll see uh, what we have to work with. Obviously, trading away Bailey and Bukestad really helped us out. 
uh, shed $8 million in cap space. Uh, so Wallstrom here, the number one guy we have to resign, 22 and 88 overall. Pretty nuts. Now he's a UFA because he was like a created player and sometimes messes up. Uh, Seven million for six years. Honestly, is not even that bad. Um, five years, he actually gets a little bit cheaper. But if it's only a million, like we can probably get him six years, maybe six point seven five for twenty-two year old. He's just gonna keep getting better and better. Like that's cheaper than Barzell. Same rating and older. Um, Lindholm, I'd like to give uh, get back. Did they give up quite a bit for him? Four years, 6.1. That's like pretty good too. Now he doesn't want to resign. He wants to hit free agency. So we'll offer a bit more there. See what he says. Uh, so Bois is locked up. Same with Perfetti. Um, now Niku, 25, 84. It should be a reasonable contract. 5 million for four years. Um, seems kind of expensive based on where he's at. Honestly though, like 25. I think I'd be willing to go like 4.5. Five year, or four years maybe. See what he says for that. And then after that, of course, we have Matthew Savoie. Very excited to see kind of what he can do for us. We'll give him the max uh, rookie deal there. Let's see uh, what kind of stats does he have after juniors. So he actually only had not really great points there for some reason, but well, look at that. So he's got 85 speed. Hands are sick though. Um, shot there could be better. I mean, only 73 accuracy. So his shot really didn't get much better at all from like his base player. Um, offensive defense awareness that went way up 99 discipline strength stats as well like they weren't that high to begin with I'm not sure why the shot didn't really grow maybe just wasn't scoring that much but looks to be a very good playmaker so we'll, we'll kind of see what happens there um, with him kind of weird stats Valino Byram should just keep getting better and better help make this team so we definitely have some you know, good young players uh, Sumla, Fitzgerald, Olofsson all these kind of depth guys um, we'll actually have to take a look at the position, see if we need them. So if we re-sign Lindholm, Olsen's our fifth best defenseman, but we have Miller coming up, Hetherington, McIsaac. Hetherington at this point, I'm going to let go unless he wants a two-way deal, which he doesn't. So we'll just let him go. Um, Olsen will have to be really cheap to bring him back. 1.7 for three years. Honestly, he was good, but we like we have a 79 Miller, 78 McIsaac. Same with Sarah Charvey, Van Assam, but like... Uh, we have guys that can definitely take his place. And I just saw Drysdale finally needs a contract. So he's 20-73. Uh, medium elite. Probably will just be in the AHL. Hopefully tearing it up. And next year, guys, are looking at goalies. So we kind of have a tough decision here. Braswell wants to come back. But Spencer Knight, 79 overall. He's going to grow at least a little bit over the summer. Like, he'll be at least an 80 on a uh, rookie deal. Braswell, though, 1.5. Like, that's so cheap. I feel like we should sign him. And then, worst case, we just trade him and uh, let Spencer Knight come up because uh, that's a really good deal, I think, for a backup. Also, just want to check every other position quick. So, totally forgot we have Alex Newhook on this team as well. Like, we are so stacked. Um, Peterson here, it's kind of expensive for 78, so I'm just going to qualify him. Also, guys, looking at our forward depth here, I realize we still have Kolachuk on the team. I don't know why I thought he retired. Maybe just because he's so much lower rated than the other one, but even though he's 80 overall, um, he's actually still got really good like offensive stats. Puck skills there, five star. Shooting five star. 93 offensive awareness. Just like his defense, skating, physical are all terrible. But we'll see what he wants here. Like yeah, 950k for one year. We might as well bring him back. Like that's that's a pretty good deal. Um, and then Sumo and Fitzgerald, we could use them for like fourth line. At that price though, I feel like we could probably get slightly better deals. Just have our own guys kind of come through. So I think I'm gonna let both of them go. And just, you know, hope we get some growth. Like, Malinston there, 78. New, New Hook, 78. I could definitely see them um, coming up. Now, speaking of uh, Kovalchuk, I think Dustin Bufflin actually um, may have retired. Because I do not see him here on the defense list. So right here, guys, Lindholm rejected our offer. We offered him more than he asked for. He wants to test free agency. So probably just have to let him go. And we can resign him there or somebody better. Braswalo accepts. Nika rejects. Um, have to give him a bit more money. Kovalchuk rejects as well, wants to go to free agency. I mean, I'd much rather just let him go and trade for the 85 Kovalchuk. Um, Walsh on no accepts, that's awesome. Same with Anglin, uh, Van Sample, Smith, all the AHL guys, or except for uh, Sir Jarby there. Savoie as well, Drysdale, Gallant. So I literally offered Nico an extra 50k, he says yes. Uh, Kovalchuk rejected, I offered him like an extra 200k. I'm thinking we'll probably just sign him out of free agency, because um, I might, might as well stick with our guy. But then uh, Buffalo and I would like to trade for since, uh, like I said, I believe hers retired. I, when you, you know you know miss a month, I guess that's what's gonna happen. So at the free agency period now, we still have a lot of money to spend. Let's see who's available. Twenty three point six million. Klingberg's there. Lindholm. I mean Klingberg's 
Sonny Rick more than Lindholm, but one overall higher. Uh, I got Trocek, Pareko, uh, Bjorkstrand, Barbashev. So some really good players. Miller, Manson, Latang's 83 now. Um, so yeah, I would love to either add Lindholm or Klingberg. Honestly, we could add both, which is kind of insane. I believe Klingberg's left-handed, or sorry, uh, Klingberg's right and Lindholm's left. So that could be our D top pair, which would be kind of ridiculous. Um, let's just check goalies. Quick 84 is a bit concerning. So Sorokin, 26, 86, low starter. So his potential's actually gone down a bit. Um, Lekin in there, I don't know how Buffalo doesn't get him signed. 23, 87, medium elite. He'd be sick, but like we don't really even need him. We have such good prospect goalies coming up. Um, Bennington as well, 28.85, relatively cheap, so um, lots of options here. And I just checked two eight players with solid potential, guys. There's actually a good amount here. Uh, so Hilpert and Cahill, both 20, mid to high 60s, low top six. Then you got these three, all 20, uh, 269, 167, medium top nine. Like that's really good just to get for free. And there's actually some solid defensemen down here as well. Um, so Callahan's probably the best. 21 years old, already 72 overall. Like that's not bad at all. Like he'll be really solid in the AHL. Um, the other three here, all medium top six. Again, if we can get them for free, might as well. But I'm going to actually try and make some trades here, clear up roster spots, and just kind of get rid of some dead weight. And then, like I said, I would love to sign both Klingberg and Lindholm. Uh, I think that'd be kind of insane. All right, guys, so now I'm trying to trade Jonathan Quick to the Florida Panthers for a second round pick. And I'm actually retaining half his salary. Uh, they basically weren't willing to trade for him at a full contract because 84 overall making 5.8. It's a bit expensive. So we'll see what the Panthers say here. Trades rejected. Um, okay, I mean, honestly, I'm just trying to save some money here. So I'll take a third round pick, even though it's a lot less value. It's also on the block for them. And there we go. So a bit of a steep price, but I think it's worth it. And next you guys are trying to get traded with Nashville, offering up three prospects that honestly are three of our worst, but they add up to more than a second round pick. Bermistrov there is low top six, but um, rating's not too good. 61 overall. Um, then you got Bachman there, 2169, medium top nine. Malinston, 2478, medium top nine, but... I noticed his hands are absolutely terrible, so willing to move on from these guys, especially if it gets us a second round pick, which it does, so that's pretty awesome. Obviously, too, just opened up a few more roster spots. And like I was saying, guys, in free agency here, I want to go after the two best players who are also both Swedish defensemen, Klingberg and Lindholm. How awesome would that be, them on our top pair? Honestly, I feel like our forward group's fine, so I don't think I'm even going to make offers on any of the forwards available. Just want these two defensemen as well as a goalie, either Sorokin or Binnington, maybe Pekalekinen, I'm not sure, so... Klingberg, 29, 5 years, so it's only until he's 34. I'm going to go 7.5 million. I mean, he's an 89 overall defense. I mean, like, he's insane. Then Lindholm, hopefully get him back. I'm going to go 7 for him. I think we offered him 6.5 when he's on our team. 4 years till he's 32, like, that's fair, too. So we would still actually have 11 million, which is pretty nuts. Obviously, we'll need it coming soon, though. Lots of guys are going to get paid. So Sorokin, 26, 86. Um, Lekin only wants 4.2 million. One year, 3.8, I think. Is that second round pick territory? Because if it is, we definitely have to uh, make this offer. Although we actually don't have our second round pick, so that sucks. So you know what I'm thinking? We might as well go and uh, make a trade for Lekkanen since, like I said, we don't have the picks. All right, guys, looking at Buffalo here, they really messed up their cap management. Looks like they have under a million in cap space. Um, Lekkanen, obviously very good. 23 years old, 87 overall, medium lead potential. Only wants, what was it, like four and a half million. That's so fair. Um, for his age and rating. And I noticed that if they get rid of him, their next best goalie is Lungfist, who I don't know how they got him. 40 years old, still an 80 overall. So he'd be the backup if we trade them. Brassois, who, like I said, we don't really need. I think Spencer Knight should grow. So use him in this trade, help us out. Uh, Butsayev there, we just drafted, elite potential. But if he gets us Pekalek and then we got to do it. And then Rodin here is a low top four uh, potential defenseman. So the value is pretty equal. We'll see what they say. Trade accepted. That's amazing. And obviously, guys, I'll make sure I sign them quick. Uh, I don't want any team to make an offer sheet. So 4.2 for three years. Like, that is such good value till he's 26. So I'm sure he'll say yes to 4 million. At 87 overall, we are going to have just so many good goalies. Lekkinen, Wallstedt, Knight. Kind of ridiculous. And so this BN Choney guy except their offer. Uh, top six potential defensemen. Same with Bodwin there. Hilpert, Cahill. I think those were the two low top sixes. So all those two-way guys said yes. Um, Merrill in a fifth for Markov. Honestly, if we get Klingberg and Lindholm, we do not need him, so I'm going to say no. If we get both, like, that'd be just insane. Um, Callahan there, 72 overall. He was probably the best two-way prospect. Still waiting to hear back here from, I guess, Pekka Lekkinen as well. Lindholm comes back to the team. There we go. Uh, he did get us, you know, another 500k out of us going to free agency. 
and Klingberg also accepts, so we just signed a top pair. Like, that's insane. Lindholm and Klingberg, like I said, both Swedish, one's right and one's left. Lekin in there also says yes, so this team is stacked. Also guys, as you can see at the bottom there, we still have 10.5 million in cap space, so uh, I'm going to make an offer here to Kolvachuk, one year, one million dollars. It's our Kolvachuk, we'll bring him back, play him on the fourth line, obviously. You can still score a bunch there, probably be like second unit power play as well. And I'm going to think about maybe making a trade for Bufflin. We don't really need him, but it would be kind of cool to get him back on the team. And actually guys, look at our defense, we don't need Bufflin at all, so Klingberg, Lindholm, top pair. Truba and Niku is the second, and then we'll have Byram and Miller on the third. Uh, we still have like 378s behind them, so what I'm thinking, maybe we trade for him at the deadline. It'd probably be cheaper to trade for then, easier with the cap and everything. And hopefully, you know, can trade for him at the deadline and uh, win him a Stanley Cup. Also guys, looking at our forward depth, I noticed we could maybe use one more guy. So, Ferlin here is the highest rated forward still available, 82 overall, wants 2.4. Um, kind of something we don't have, he's like a power forward, grinder in this case. 90 aggressiveness and body check and 88 strength. Most of our guys are more skills, so wouldn't mind bringing them in to be like on the fourth line. So one year we'll offer them, um, I don't know, 2.65. Hopefully that gets it done. And Ferland does accept our offer, so that's awesome. Uh, still actually waiting to hear back from Kolbachuk. Feel like he should sign with us. Rejects. Oh, we have a full roster. That sucks. So I'm trading angling here, guys, for the Canucks for a seventh round pick. Lowest rated player on our team. Plus we're running all those AHL defensemen, so I don't really need them now. And they do say yes. And right here, guys, Kolbachuk does accept their offer. I actually got him for 50k cheaper. So, like I was saying, I think our team's good for next year. We're going to be insane. And after making that small trade with the Canucks, guys, they repay us by making an offer sheet here on Jacob Peterson. One point, we're just under 1.2 there for two years. Uh, don't get any picks or anything. We have the money, so might as well match. I didn't really want to because he's a 78. It might even be in the AHL, but... In that case, it's like costing us 100k to not lose a player, so it's still worth it. And Pittsburgh just offered us a second round pick for Wheeler and a fourth. Honestly, making 8.2 million for the next two years at his rating, it's a very good offer, but we gotta hold on to him. We gotta get him that Stanley Cup playing for Atlanta. And if you guys look at the captaincy for next season, it's actually the only three remaining Atlanta Thrashers alumni on this team. So Wheeler there running the C, and then Kovalchuk and Kane. Uh, both as the alternates. So heading into this season guys, our team stats is champion obviously and like I was saying I'm very excited to get going here. I think this team could be a Stanley Cup champion. So first line you have Cole Perfetti now an 88 playing with Barzell and Wallstrom was actually gone to an 89. Uh, Perfetti has some of the sickest stats like 99 deking, 97 hand-eye, 95 passing and puck control, uh, his speed, XL agility all 95. The shot power is not great, accuracy also could be a bit better but He's still just like a basically sick playmaker. Uh, you got Meyer playing with Dubois and Kane on the second line. You then have Lino with Savoie and Wheeler. Now, Savoie has franchise potential, so he'll probably be like an 87 before the season's even over, in which case, I don't know, we'll move him up to the second line. Maybe Dubois goes to the wing or something instead of Kane. We'll figure it out. Um, fourth line there, you got Kovalchuk with Smith and Ferland. So, Ferland and Smith, they're basically grinders. Uh, Kovalchuk, though, is a sniper, so they can get him to puck. He can definitely score. Uh, defense, Lindholm, Klingberg, top pair, so sick. Uh, we have Truba and Byram there on the second. Byram's actually up to an 84. Elite potential should continue to grow. Uh, then we have Niku and Miller on the second pair, or sorry, third pair. And Miller's actually 82 now. So probably the best defense in the NHL. If not, it's going to be close. Um, Lekin in there now in 88. Knights in 81, so definitely made sense to trade Brassois. One overall less, but elite potential. Entry level deal for two more years. Uh, special teams here as well. That first unit is pretty nasty. Same goes for the second one, honestly. Kolbachuk just has to shoot, kind of like Ovechkin. The rest of the guys there can definitely score. Um, so looking at the AHL team now, it's also pretty stacked. So foot here, elite potential, just a sniper. He's got sick hands, sick shot. I think he had a, I think the second most goals or the most goals in the AHL last year. Um, what was it? Yeah, 44 goals. And he's going to be playing with Alex Newhook, who's a sick playmaker. I mean, 79 overall, almost good enough to be in the NHL. Really, he kind of is, but... His role there is depth forward, so I think he'll grow more in the AHL. Fast, awesome hands, good shot. And then this Fajimo dude. I don't know why he's on the first line. I feel like it makes more sense. We'll put Peterson out there. That's just a nasty first line in the AHL. Even this Kirk guy is actually pretty solid, but looks like Peterson's probably a bit better. So just looking through here, we got Datsuk, Dimitri Datsuk, that is. Um, this team should tear it up. Defense, McIsaac, Sarah Jarvie, both 79s, 278s there, like... We're stacked. Um, I just noticed Drysdale there up to a 75. Um, one of these seven, or Van de Sample, we'll just put him on the uh, bottom pair. Who cares? Get Drysdale some more minutes. Hopefully uh, help him grow. Goalies, Wallstedt's now a 78. Again, franchise potential on him at 21 years old. Or sorry, 19 years old. 
that's pretty ridiculous. Like our goalies, we have so many good goalies. We're gonna like we're gonna have to trade one, if not two of them. So um, both NHL and AHL teams look stacked. We'll actually check the ratings right now as well. I think defense might be our strongest thing. Um, I feel like goal or sorry forwards definitely could have been a bit better, but we have so many guys with awesome potential. So 96 offense and defense, 94 goaltending. Obviously, Carolina's rocking a preseason roster, but. Uh, Feeling pretty good about this team. All right, guys. So it's now the end of December here. We have a 2012 and four record, which is pretty solid. Uh, the first eight games, though, I was super worried. Uh, you guys see it here, starting with Anaheim and then ending with uh, Tampa Bay. There, I believe we were one six and one. So I wasn't sure what was going on there uh, in the first eight games, but luckily we pulled it together. We're now 2012 and four here, right around the Christmas break. So. Not too bad at all. Also, I noticed HL teams killing it 24 8 and 1. Like I was saying, chance for a Stanley Cup and Calder Cup this year, which would be pretty awesome. And we just got a decent trade off here, guys, from the Predators. Ryan Ellis in a second for McIsaac, Ruedel, and James. So uh, we'll take a look here. I think both those guys are pretty decent prospects. Um, let's see. Medium top four defenseman and low top six forward. McIsaac, obviously, though, is solid. 79 overall at 22 years old. Ellis. 84 overall, so he's not bad, but making 6.2 million, honestly, I think our defense is good enough. We don't really need him. And Nationals making us another huge offer here. Tolvanen and a second for Drysdale, McIsaac, and a third. Um, Drysdale, obviously, is a solid uh, prospect defenseman. He's got elite potential there. Currently 76 overall, but Tolvanen's usually sick. Yeah, he's 89 overall. Um, and for an 89 overall player, 7.5 is really not that bad. Plus, we're getting a second round pick there. Now, McIsaac with him. It's quite a bit to give up, and we're gonna have to like resign a bunch of guys pretty soon here. So, I wonder if anyone with a bad contract we could uh, offload. All right, guys. So I made one change to this trade. I subbed out McIsaac for Ruedel as McIsaac's more NHL ready. So I kind of want that if we're giving up Drysdale, who's really good defensive prospect, probably our best one not in the NHL. Tolvin though, like he's worth it for sure. So we'll see what Nashville says to this. Trade is accepted. That is a huge addition. And another trade deadline here with a record of 33, 23, and 6. So pretty good, but not as good as I was hoping for. Um, HL team, though, crushing it 45, 10, and 2. So we should be at least in a wildcard spot right now. And we're actually third spot in the division there, 72 points. Only one, though, ahead of the Capitals. Uh, Walsh on there, lean score, 51 points in 62 games. I was hoping we'd have someone a bit closer to a point per game. Like we have a really stacked team right now. So. Probably not going to mix it up too much. I feel like our team's pretty good, so unless there's a crazy player on the trade block, only move we'll probably make here is trading for Bufflin, trying to get him a Stanley Cup, playing for the Atlanta Thrashers. It's so like I was saying, guys, right now I'm trying to get a trade for Bufflin. Ours is retired, but uh, the one on the Jets is still there. 37 years old, 81 overall. Um, so he's actually like a downgrade, but I want to make him hopefully win a cup. Uh, Smith here is currently scratched on an NHL team. They want him. Has, I think, slightly more value. So they do this. I think it's worth it. We'll see what they say. Trades rejected. Um, Smith has more value and they want him. That's, I mean, I'm only willing to pay so much to try and get Bufflin a Stanley Cup here. I'd be willing to do a third rounder as well, but that is it. And they still say no to that. So, unfortunately, it looks like Bufflin just knocked me winning a cup with the Thrashers. Uh, one thing I actually noticed as well. Um, so, our Blake Wheeler is like an 80 overall still. He's playing fourth line center right now for us. Uh, their Blake Wheeler is a 76. So, Kind of interesting to see how players grow on different teams. Like uh, the Kovachuk that's still on LA. Last time I saw him, he was like an 85, which is pretty insane. Um, he's now an 84, but still um, a lot higher than ours. I think ours is like a 78, or yeah, he's a 78. So uh, I thought that was interesting. You know what, guys? I'm going to try one more trade for Bufflin. I added a second, third rounder. This is way too much, especially for a scratch defenseman, just to get him a cup with Atlanta. Here we go. Trade is accepted. Again, he's literally our seventh defenseman. I'm just hoping we can win Bufflin at can't Stanley Cup as an Atlanta Thrasher. Same with Wheeler and Kovachuk. Uh, those guys don't have a lot of time left. So after the trade deadline, guys, just an update look at the team. We got Perfetti, Barzell, and Walsh Jones as the first line. Meyer, Dubois, and Tolvin is the second. Uh, Valino, Savoie, and Kane on the third with Kovachuk, Wheeler, and Frillin on the fourth. Surprise, Savoie hasn't grown yet. Like, franchise potential usually uh, grows a lot during the season. Defense there is the exact same, except we now have Bufflin on the bottom pair. Um, Miller is a bit better of a skater, a bit better hands, but Bufflin obviously has that size element. I think his shot's a lot better as well. Um, defense, pretty similar. So hopefully, again, we can win him a Stanley Cup. Um, same with Wheeler there. He's like an 80 now. Probably going to buy him out after this season. Kovachuk, 39. Probably going to retire. At which point, the only original Lanthrash we're going to have left is Vander Kane. Um, goalies, too. You can see Lekkanen and Knight. 
uh, still the one and two. They've been playing really well so far this year. Um, right there, they look at the first power play unit, kind of insane. Second one is also very solid. So hopefully, you can keep playing well here, get a good uh, playoff position, and then go for that cup. And we're nothing to the season here with a record of 42, 33, and seven. So really not that great considering how good this team is. Like after the deadline, we actually had a ton of losses. Like you can see there, three straight losses immediately after the deadline. Uh, another three game losing streak there. Um, another one there, like, I don't know why this team wasn't winning that much, like, we're so stacked. Um, AHL team, though, is insane, 56, 15, and 2, uh, so what is that? I think 91 points, we should still at least be a wildcard team, and obviously once you're there, wow, yeah, we are a wildcard team, so we just got in. Um, actually, maybe we didn't, uh, no, we're quite a bit better than any of the other wildcard teams, but still. Um, we're gonna be the lowest seed, it looks like, in these playoffs. Toronto there, 117 points, that's insane. Um, Wallstrom 66 and 82 would have hoped for a little bit better than that from him We'll see what everyone else did um, Let's see so Perfetti 58 with only four goals complete playmaker. That's it Barzell 55 Tolvanen Dubois Meyer Kovachuk still had 40 even though he's a 78. So that's impressive Kane Savoie 36 rookie year not bad at all um, Wheeler still had 32 so I mean we're definitely gonna be switching it up a bit after this season I think the team's gonna be even better Shedding some of the dead weights, but uh, this team still should have done better than they did. Um, Lekin in there, pretty much 0.92, 2.44. Spencer Knight could have had better stats, but 81 overall, still pretty young. Obviously, too, we also have uh, Wallstead currently in the AHL. His stats are insane. Um, yeah, so 0.934 and a 1.68. Even though it's the AHL, that is nuts. Uh, he'll definitely be like the starter of the future. Peterson there, 63, foot 58. I know he's now an 81, so. He'll for sure making the team next year. Probably should be there right now. Newhook's a 79. He's going to make the team next year. Pearson probably as well. So a lot of guys coming up. Um, so let's actually check who led the entire league in scoring now. Don't think any of our guys are going to be there. 66 is nowhere near enough. And Shifley, 88. Sagan, so the Rock, Paper, Scissor Buddies. Kudrow, Stamkos, McDavid. Byfield actually at 83. Uh, Radulov, Debrinkat. And I'm sure you guys are going to check the standings. Um, just see where we finished the entire league. Obviously, we're fifth in our division, last playoff spot, but doesn't mean, you know, we'll see where we are in the entire league. Um, so we're actually 14th in the league, yeah. Um, West was a bit worse than us. Who was last in the entire league? Montreal, 70 points. That's rough. So the first round of the playoffs, guys, we're up against the President's Trophy winning Toronto Maple Leafs, and their team composition has actually completely changed. It used to be, like, offense heavy, now it's defense heavy, so... First line, there's Janssen, Tavares, and Nylander. Then they have Kadri, Matthews, and Bracco. After that, drops off quite a bit. Marlo here is still playing at 43 years old, 76 overall. Uh, with Jenner and Yanmark, they have Brown, Engel, and Nieto on the fourth line. Defense, the top pair is insane. Riley and Repick. This Repick dude, 92 overall at 19 years old. 6'5", defense to defense. But you can see he's got franchise potential. He's actually drafted first overall 2021. 92 overall at 19. I don't think I've ever seen someone rated that high that quick. Um, that's insane. Second pair there, you got Hamilton, Lodgegren, then Muzzin, and Sandin. So I thought our decor was the best. I think, honestly, it's going to be the Leafs. Goalie's there. Anderson's the starter. Jerry's now his backup. So their defense, like I said, is insane. Um, ours is really good too, though. So I feel like they're not going to have too much of an advantage there. Our offense is definitely better. And I think our goaltending is about a wash. So... Um, I think we definitely still have a chance here to take them, which would be pretty awesome. Take out, you know, the best team in the league. First game, it's 1-1 after 1. We got Wallstrom and Nylander each scoring. There we go. Klingberg, Kolochuk, and Frillin for us. Janssen for them. Nothing in the third period. So, we take game 1 there in Toronto, like I said. Even though they finished first in the league and we were, like, last um, in our conference to make the playoffs, our team, at, on paper, I think, pretty much just as good. So... We'll see what happens here in game number two. Uh, two goals there. Kolbachuk, Klingberg. So Kolbachuk coming alive. Wants that cup. Uh, Dubois, Perfetti. And in the third, you got Tolan and Tavares. So 5-2 win. Take both games in Toronto. That is awesome. Uh, would love to kind of play spoiler here. Obviously heading back to Atlanta now. And I actually do want to check um, our rating just because I am curious um, how close it is. So we have three better offense. They have one better defense, one better goaltending. But yeah, still, it's very, very close. I'm actually curious who that player is on the right. I think it's probably Wallstrom. Um, I'm trying to think who are highest rated players. I think we have like four guys, all 89. So here we go. Like I said, on paper, we're just as good. Standings don't matter at this point. You're in the playoffs. Everyone's equal. Nothing in the first. 
Um, we get one there from Perfetti. Barely scores, but when he does, it's clutch. And then another game winner there from Wallstrom. Nylander for them, but 2-1 win. 3-0 series lead. Let's go. So uh, this would be pretty insane. Sweep the President's Trophy winner. Uh, this would be pretty similar, I guess, to Columbus. Sweeping the Tampa Lightning. So game number four, heading back to Atlanta. Obviously, we got all the momentum. I think the AHL team uh, should be starting the playoffs soon, too. I'm not sure actually how they finished. Potentially, like, first in the AHL. Um, nothing in the first there. Second period, they get one from Matthews. And there we go. We pushed it to OT with Barzell. Oh, they do get the OT winner, though. Matthews gets both goals. So Matthews uh, refusing to get uh, swept there in the first round. So here we go, guys. Game number five. They get one in the first from Matthews again. Uh, second period answer back to Lindholm. And there we go. Third period series winner, Tolvanen. So that trade was worth it. Moving on to the second round. And I just checked to you guys, and I was right. Our AHL team did win the league. 118 points. Um, that's pretty impressive. Hopefully, uh, they can go on and win the Calder. So... Um, second round here, actually playing the Ottawa Senators. I want to take a look at what their lines are looking like because Ottawa actually did very, very well um, this season. So I'm kind of curious to see how that team has turned around. Obviously, five years, quite a while. So uh, Kachuk, Colin White, only 84 overall as the first line center. is not great. Abramov, Pacioretty, Bailey there. I mean, he is still better than Savoie right now, but <laughs> that w we fleeced them on that trade for Savoie. Panarin. Uh, McLennan, Norris, Formanton, Duclair, Brown, Bukestad. So, good amount of depth. Kachuk and Panarin. I feel like, I don't know why they wouldn't put both of them on the first line. Uh, Shabbat, Petrangelo, Nielsen, Brandstrom, Peterson, Vatanen. So, they've also got pretty solid decor. Just York and net up to a 91. And Gustafson's actually his backup. So, um, definitely, again, good team. I would say defense, goaltending, pretty similar. Although, they actually have... Uh, better goaltending. Our offense, though, um, I've liked our offense better than both teams so far. So hopefully uh, the boys can uh, find a way here to keep winning. Looks like Ottawa went to seven in their first series. So first game, first period. Norris scores. Wow. Uh, Duclair, Brown, Shabbat for them. Walsh them for us. They get another one there from Brown. So not a good first game. Lose it 5-1. Uh, luckily, though, it is a seven-game series. So lots of time here to come back. As long as we can win, like, one game in Ottawa, I think that'd be good. Um, go back to Atlanta, hopefully win two in a row, go up in that series. Three to one, so here we go. Game number two, first period, they get two again, Patch ready, Bukestad. Nothing in the second, we need, a, we need an answer here. And there we go, uh, Barzell and Savoy each score going to OT. Nothing in the first OT. Are you kidding me, Petrangelo, second OT game winner. So, at least we pulled back in that one, made it close, unfortunately though. Couldn't win it, so we're down two. Uh, I guess good news is we are heading home at this point, so... If we can just win the next two, tie this series up. So far, I think we played pretty well um, at home in Atlanta. So game number three, we got to win this one. We can't go down 3-0. There we are. Sorry, Duclair for them. I don't know why I thought we scored. Uh, Furlan, McLennan for them. So we need one here in the third. And we get two. Oh, that's awesome. Tolvin and Furlan again. So 3-2 uh, win. Pull back. Not going to get swept. That's awesome. Like I was saying, hopefully I uh, can win two straight in here in Ottawa. That would be huge for us. Obviously, at that point, series is tied. It's essentially a best of three. I think Toronto's team, honestly, is probably a bit better than Ottawa's anyways. So, if we can beat Toronto, we can beat Ottawa. First period, no score. Second period, they get one there from Shabbat. Third, tie it up with Wheeler. Let's go, fourth line. Come on, OT. Are you kidding me again? Brown in OT. <sighs> that sucks. Two games go to OT. Just essentially like a coin flip. We lose both of them. So, we have to win the next three straight here. Um, to move on to the conference final. Like I was saying, we have so many Thrash alumni I feel are probably about to retire. Uh, Wheeler, Kovalchuk, Bufflin. I really want to win a Stanley Cup for those guys. Um, let's go. Game five. We get one there from Wallstrom. Not a good second, but we still are tied. Coleman gets one. Abramov, Bailey for them. Third period here is huge. I'm going to OT again. Are you kidding me? They get the goal there in OT from Norris. So, Lose to Ottawa there in five games, and they got three of their four wins in OT. Like, how unlucky is that? Also, guys, HL is currently in the second round, so we'll just sim through here. Um, see how they do. So I think it looks like they're moving on to the uh, conference final. And the conference finals here, they're playing against the Condors. Of course, it's the Oilers AHL team. And uh, they lose in five after being the best AHL team by far in the regular season. That sucks. And check this out, guys. Draft results are in, and St. Louis is picking first overall via Boston. You hate to see that uh, when a team trades away uh, the first overall pick. So draft class, last I looked, yeah, the top player, the first overall, is only medium elite. So 
Not a huge deal. Last year's draft had three franchise players. Actually looks like this is kind of a bad draft. You got five medium leads total. Um, lots of top six. Unless, of course, our scouts have found some that are going to be like late. But no one that's for sure thing. This guy here, plus 125. Could be a steal for us at the draft. Uh, so retired players here. We'll take a look. How many do we have? Um, so Patrick Mahalo finally does retire at 43. I just want to check um, our team first. So Kolbachuk does retire at 40 years old. 1,092 points. Kind of insane. Um, I'm wondering if like the other Kolbachuk retired. And he did. So Kolbachuk can't get him a cup, unfortunately, for Thrashers. Our Kolbachuk retires. Same with the other one. He retired at 84. I don't know why was so, ours was so low rated. Like We played him high on, as long as we could. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Marley at 46. Stahl. Palmaville. Miku Koivu, Steen, Latang, only 36, Keith 39, Shea Weber retires. I think in this case, like in real life, Preds get absolutely screwed uh, with the cap hit. Lucic retires there, probably uh, when his contract's finally up there with the Oilers. So that means that uh, Wheeler and Bufflin are actually still playing. So we could bring Bufflin maybe back on a super cheap deal. Wheeler, honestly, I might buy out and then re sign for like a million dollars because I think that'd be cheaper than just paying him. Um, the 8 million. Eric Stahl there becoming a scout. So I'll check the awards now as well. Uh, as you can see there, Stanley Cup champion Vancouver Canucks. Perfetti, our leading playoff scorer, 8 points in 10 games there. Again, I'm not really sure what went wrong. I thought our team was built pretty well this year. So Canucks, uh, they beat Blues, Ducks, Avalanche, and then the Senators. So uh, Senators did represent the East there in the Stanley Cup final. Actually lost to Canucks in 7. All Canadian Stanley Cup final. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen that. I don't know how long. Um, so look at that, it's, uh, all Canadian actually team awards, player awards, Shifley with the Art Ross, Demko with the heart, so he must have had awesome stats, Shabbat James Norris, Sagan Lady Bing, uh, Gunther there got the Calder, I believe he was the guy who went first overall above uh, right and Savoie, uh, Con Smythe goes to Demko as well, same with the Vesna, Anderson the goal gets to William M. Jennings, uh, Bill Masterton there to Petrangelo, O'Reilly with the Selkie for the fourth straight year, I guess it's the O'Reilly award now, not the Bergeron award. Uh, Demko also gets Ted Lindsay and Kane Reese with Shard. So Demko absolutely cleaned up. Um, AHL, of course, uh, Bakersfield there won the Calder Cup. Our team, though, won the equivalent of the President's Trophy. Um, so also means we won our conference and our division. Wondering if we got any player awards as well. Uh, so Schultz, most points. Iguchi there, MVP. Obviously, he's got sick hands. Martin's there, most goals. Robertson, outstanding rookie. Johansson, best defenseman. Wallstead did get best goalie, so there we go. And last year, Spencer Knight had it, so we pump out goalies. That's what one thing our franchise is good at. Uh, Wolf, MVP of the playoffs. Obviously, that's uh, the goalie there. Um, Iguchi also got sportsmanship. Uh, Vigilante, I guess is how you say it, and community involvement. And Di Pietro, lowest goals against. I know Iguchi has like no aggression, no strength or anything, so he probably takes no penalties. Uh, now, I actually want to check quickly. I'll uh, just see Demko stats. Whenever a goalie takes home that much hardware. I feel like you just have to. So we'll see just how good he did. I think our goalies are still probably a little bit better, but um, we'll see how Demko did here. So 0.938 in the regular season with a 1.85. That's pretty insane. 45 wins and 67 games played. Definitely, I think, deserving of that hard trophy. So that's it, guys, for this season. Um, again, next season, making some moves. Going to try and bring back, you know, Buffalo and Wheeler on cheap contracts. Have a lot of the young guys come through, work the cap best we can. Uh, should be an interesting offseason for sure. I promise the next episode's not going to take a month. Hopefully, it'll be out within the week. Other than that, though, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.